Well, hey, grown lady. Hey, how are you? <laughs> I am. Look at you. You're a woman. <laughs> oh, thank you. When did you. this happen? I don't know. I don't know. It's been a long year, as you know. <laughs> How are you? You are I'm gorgeous. Doing, thank you. I'm doing pretty well. It's been it's been a long time doing online school, so I think I've grown up a little bit through you know the adversity that's been coming our way. Yeah, yeah. What year are you? I'm in eleventh grade. Okay. All right. So you're starting to apply to colleges, all that stuff. You're starting to look yeah. at that. Thinking about it. It's harder. I yeah. thought I felt like it was so much easier until I saw my friends now going through that process. And it's very draining. Yeah. And I, I'm impressed with what they've been able to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully by the time you're in that process, let's hope that the country has opened up and you can actually visit a campus. I feel like my uh, Sasha Malia is a senior now. She graduates this year and Sasha is a sophomore. And she's just like, I've missed all of my college experience. And I was like, yeah, you'll be okay, you know, but hopefully you will be in that window where you can, you know, college will be somewhat normal again um, when you're applying and ready to go. So, I, you know, you, you may be one of the lucky ones. <laughs> yeah, I, I think of myself that way already with the way that my family's been able to stay safe. But I feel like there's Absolutely. there's some people I've seen that their high school experience, they just didn't get to finish it the way they wanted to. But I, yeah. my mom told me it's, it's more, you feel worse about it in the moment than you do looking back on it. Like you're not going to miss the prom as bad as you think you will. I say that all, I wish, you know, see, my kids don't listen to me either. So I wish they could talk to your mom, but it's about perspective. I mean, you know, when you're my age, college is just a little blip in your life. And it, you know, high school is a blip in your life. And these years will not impact you one way or the other, you know, and that's the thing to keep in mind when you're applying to college, you're going to get into a college, right? <laughs> yeah, I bet you, you're going to get into a college. And <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna have a great experience, no matter where you go. So taking the pressure off yourself that there are only five colleges you can go to, that's what puts the pressure on young people, you know? Um, so I know you're going to do great. I'm so proud of Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. What you what, what's on your mind? What are you, what are you doing? And in in your room looks very neat. Thank I love you. It. This is all my dad's hard work. He, we now have a Zoom room, basically, since everything is on Zoom. That's uh, I, so cool. Yeah, we took our, this is my mom's old, like, home gym, office, whatever, and then we just made it into something that we could all use, because we, right now, I mean, I do everything like this, so that's how we've been yeah. using it. It looks great. Thank you. Okay, I'm getting ready and excited to ask you my very first and only question. So one thing <laughs> I was thinking about, <laughs> one thing I was thinking about a lot as I was, you know, uh, looking through Becoming and watching interviews is that you and your husband have a lot of hands-on experience to what's going on in the world. You see the good and you see the bad and you have a really strong knowledge of social issues. So how do you try to keep your daughters informed about these issues while also ensuring them that things will be okay and that you can be optimistic yeah. and, and keeping them aware, but also keeping them hopeful? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and I think it goes to what your mom was saying in, in terms of uh, what we try to impart with our kids is some level of context and perspective. And that's probably one of the challenging things for young people at this time is like, what gets you through this time is having perspective. And perspective comes with age and wisdom. You know, it's not something that you can have right now because it takes some experience and some time to be able to look back over things and go, oh, that period wasn't as bad as it seems compared to so much else. So we talk to our kids about the history of this country. And one of the things my husband says to my, to, to not just my girls, but to a lot of people, that if, if he were to pick any time in the world's creation <laughs> to be alive, he would pick today, hands down. You know, you think about it with the advances in medicine, you know, while we're living in quarantine and we've lost lives, you know, there were pandemics that plagued the 
the world and killed entire populations of people. But now we have vaccines and we have science and we have medicine and we have knowledge. We have uh, social media to impart information quickly, you know. Um, and while we're still dealing with racism and racial justice issues, and that has become more clear in the last year that we have not completely solved it, um, I wouldn't pick uh, a time, I, you know, I wouldn't want to be alive in the age of Jim Crow or slavery or segregation. Um, we are advanced in, in that way. We, are, we haven't reached the mountaintop, but we are further ahead than we have been. Um, the same thing is true when it comes to war, you know? I mean, we, we haven't grown up in an age of, of civil war or world war. Um, and most of history, if you look back on it, there was some major uh, either national or international um, conflict going on. We're probably experiencing a unprecedented level of peace right now, today. So while things are bad, you know, um, we are at a time when we're experiencing growth. So what we try to do is provide young people with that context. Is there work to be done? Absolutely. Should we be satisfied? Absolutely not. Should we be complacent? We cannot afford to be, um, but we should be hopeful and you should be hopeful. And I am hopeful because of your generation. Uh, you know, to be sitting here with someone who is 16 and is as intelligent and thoughtful and curious and interested as you are at this age, which is light years ahead of where I was at your age, you're only going to get better. And there are millions of young people like you out there who we've had the opportunity to meet. And that, that's the beauty of the position that we had. We got to travel the country. We got to go into people's homes and into their communities. And what we found is that people prefer to be motivated with hope rather than fear. Now we're humans and we can be misled and misguided. And we've seen that over the last four years that that is a possibility. But what we've learned about Americans, about people in general, is that at their very core, they're decent and they're kind and they are just trying to do the right, what they think is the right thing for their families. What keeps us apart is when people emphasize our differences, which are minute compared to what we're all working towards. And that's where leadership comes in because it really does matter who your leaders are. It really does matter the words that come out of their mouths and the messages and the tone that they set. And I want you all to remember that, your generation to remember tone matters, compassion and empathy matters. You can be smart as a whip, go to the best schools, but if you don't have a heart, or a soul or a moral compass, you can do really bad things in the world. Um, and that's what I'm hopeful for, that you guys are seeing how bad it can get so that you know what you're working for and why. Um, so that's what we try to tell our young people or our kids and other young people that we talk to. Thank you so much. I think that's a huge, uh, a hugely important message, especially in times of despair, to have perspective and to practice gratefulness. So thank you so much for that source of motivation. It'll help me a ton and I'm sure it'll help everyone else. Thank you so much. All right. Keep working hard and I hope to see you in the flesh one day soon. <laughs> yes, me too. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Take care, sweetie.